<laughs> the Intercollegiate Psychedelics Network. Hello, everybody. My name is James Osobe, and my presentation is titled Examining Music's Role in Psychedelic Assisted Therapy. So this gentleman on the right, his name, as many of you may know, is Aldous Huxley, famous author, psychonaut. And he made this quote that stated, after silence, that which comes nearest to expressing the inexpressible is music. And I find this quote to be very um, inspirational because it ties into a, um, the question of ineffability, which closely relates to psychedelics. And music, as we all know, is very ineffable. It's very difficult to describe what music truly is without or uh, while we listen to it. So how did I get into this? Well, growing up into a very musically inclined family, I grew up playing music pretty much for the majority of my life, starting with saxophone. Um, and I'm a music lover. And as you could see to the right image, I have a astonishing 68,000 minutes worth of uh, total listening time on Spotify. And they rated that I'm at a 69, excuse me, 96% um, above average listeners in the United States, which shows credibility that I am a true music enthusiast. But let me ask you this question. Why is the music important? Well, music can offer so much as a therapeutic tool. It can offer increased or altered emotions, and it can heighten our senses and create a different type of mental thinking. I'm going to show you the power of music with these two examples here, or these two questions per se. So I want you to take a moment to think about a song that puts you into a good mood. For me personally, that's Mambo Number no. 5, because I remember as a child, that would be our weekend cleaning song. But on the counter side, and I'm sorry if this triggers some, but I want you to think about a song that you've shared with a previous partner or an ex. Yeah probably a wave of negative emotions and that you didn't have to even hear the music to have this emotional sway, which kind of brings strength to my point about the power of music. Music is such a diverse um, variable when it comes to psychedelic assisted therapy, and there's so many different genres involved with music. You've got soul, blues, hip hop, disco, folk, uh, pump, rock, jazz, and if you are keen to this picture, you can kind of pinpoint on, boom, psychedelics. Well, what did this give rise to? As we all know with the 60s and the counterculture of um, the United States, psychedelic rock was a huge field with the Beatles, the Grateful Dead. On the bottom left, we got the legend himself, Jimi Hendrix, and Pink Floyd, all inspirational with the title of tagging with the genre type of psychedelic type music. So a little bit of an overview with my presentation here. I'm going to talk about the history of music and psychedelic practices, followed by the neuroscience of music. I'm going to look at the perspectives of music within psychedelic assisted therapy from the therapist's point of view and patient's point of view. Some ethical considerations of music administration. Lastly, I'm going to wrap up with conclusions and uh, future directions. So the current paradigm within psychedelic assisted therapy, as many of us know, is the set and setting. The set, including the mindset, and the setting, including the environment. And let's dive into the setting a little bit. We've got the facilitators as a part of the variable with the environment. Who is actually assisting the therapy? The decor, 
how many plants are in the room are there paintings on the um on the walls how is the room designed and staged but what i'm very interested in is this variable here the music and why because unlike any other variable within the setting paradigm music i believe can alter the experience to the extent that it could most likely change the overall experience let's take a look at some indigenous perspectives here icaros um, also known as the medicinal songs are performed by shamans within healing ayahuasca ceremonies on the right, we have a photograph of a shaman using the sound of plants as mimicking shakers, as used as instruments. Many indigenous cultures use music as healing vehicles to help ov the overall therapeutic process. Moving a little bit forward into time, fusing music therapy and psychedelic assisted therapy the music therapist on the left is Miss Helen Bonney, and in the 1970s, she developed the Bonney method of guided imagery in music, also known as the GIM. She worked in the Maryland Psychiatry uh, Research Center and provided over 600 different sessions and explored music's role. She worked with the famous Walter Pankey of Harvard and published the article the use of music in psychedelic LSD psychotherapy. And I would like to quickly mention Walter Pinky worked in the famous Good Friday experiment and noted that many of the participants experienced a mystical experience, quote, secondary to the um, enhanced enrichment of the emotionality of the music of the choir that was played during that experience. Now, within this paper, um, Bonnie and uh, Panky had five therapeutic objectives within music's role within psychedelic assisted therapy. Firstly, helping the patient relinquish usual controls and enter more fully into his or her inner world of experiences, facilitating the release of intense emotionality, contributing towards a peak experience providing continuity in an experience of timelessness, and then lastly, directing and structuring the overall experience. Let's take a look at some of the researchers' perspectives on the importance of music. Mendel Kalin stated that music plays a central therapeutic function in psychedelic therapy. And the famous Bill Richards over at Johns Hopkins stated, I think of it as a nonverbal support system, sort of like a net for a trapeze artist. If all's going well, you're not even aware that the net is there, but you don't even hear the music. But if you start getting anxious, if you need it, it is immediately there to provide structure. And I really like this quote because I'm a firm believer that the music should not, and I repeat, should not take the driver's seat in psychedelic assisted therapy, but be there as a therapeutic anchor for those who are experiencing high um, anxiety moments. Research supports the use of music within psychedelic assisted therapy. The Bible of psychedelics and music research is accredited to Dr. Mendel Kalin and company uh, in this research uh, paper titled The Hymn Therapist, Evidence for Central Role of Music and Psychedelic Assisted Therapy. Dr. Frederick Barrett published a couple papers with psychedelics and music within the neuroscience lens. And he additionally looked at qualitative and quantitative features with music that supported peak mystical experiences under during these psychotherapies. And then lastly, this article titled LSD enhances the emotional response to music. Overall, this shows great weight on the importance of music as a variable within this psychotherapy. From the therapist's perspective, I took some time to interview various 
psychotherapists that are involved with psychedelic assisted therapy and a ketamine assisted therapist stated the music is a critical element to ketamine assisted therapy i speak with my clients about specific music tastes to create an overall therapeutic experience i spoke with a, a clinical psychologist trained with maps and she stated it's quite the journey finding the right music for the right places we thought could work have worked quite well for folks the music is very important but I'm curious to look at what the patients have to say. Taking a quote from um, Dr. Mendel Kalin's paper, sad songs would bring painful memories on. More happy songs would make me think of a really good period in my life. Every new song could bring a new, or excuse me, could bring a different image. But on the contrary though, after speaking with a PA, PI over at UW-Madison, he stated a uh, psilocybin, Clinical trial participant stated, the music felt like it was turning my skin inside out, and all I wanted was silence. Wow, these are very powerful anecdotal experiences, which I think hold significant value that sheds light on the importance of careful music curation. This leads me to the topic of the ethics of music administration within psychedelic assisted therapy. Sound quality. So if we have a psychedelic assisted therapy clinic and they are a little bit willing to give the clients more of a comforting or a, per se, a bougier per se uh, musical outlook, they will opt out for the Sony no uh, wireless noise canceling headphones on the left on the right however we can see generic stereo headphones your ear earphones for a dollar is there any type of protocols that require a specific clinic to have a uh, level of quality in which the music is being heard next is volume control According to the Hearing Health Foundations, the average ear volume on a decibel scale that is of healthiness is at sounds that are below 70 decibels. Anything above 70 decibels can harm the eardrum or hearing health over time. And through various um, headphones, the maximum volume exceeds the healthy 70 decibel volume max capacity, which then leads me to believe that's great if you are trying to process your major depressive disorders or your PTSD, but then when you turn the age of 60 or 70, now you have to follow up with a ENT specialist for hearing aids. So I definitely want to bring the importance of having appropriate volume when giving music under a psychedelic assisted therapy. Louder is not always better. Now let's dive into a little bit of the complexity of music and mu the music playlist itself. Music is a very interesting and intricate field with many different flavors. We've got the melody and harmony, the speed or the tempo, the rhythm or the amount of beats per meter. We've got the dynamics, form, timbre, and texture, and looking a little bit into the tone color of the timbre and music. It states that it's the music quality that is not volume or pitch. So if I play the same note for, let's say, like a C major seventh on a piano, it's going to sound very different on a tone color scale if I were to play it on an electric guitar versus an acoustic guitar. Notably, many psychedelic assisted therapists put music that have non vocals or instrumental. And I've noticed through my research that many clients have strong resonation with stringed instruments. Now, how do we 
even conceptualize how to even rate music with its complexity or as earlier as Huxley stated its ineffability or its indescribableness well the Geneva emotional music scale has attempted to do this or the Gemstein scale and essentially it's a um a quiz to look at the aspects of a participant's emotional experiences during the music listening this scale is rated on a one to nine scale and it looks at Various characteristics, including wonder, transcendence, tenderness, nostalgia, peacefulness, power, joyful activity, tension, and sadness. And what I would really like to press on this slide is certain music that evokes emotions in one may evoke the opposite emotions in another, which makes this very difficult. And I think it is very important to have very open and honest conversations about music playlist curation. Now, the current play uh, paradigm with psychedelic playlists, we've got the John Hopkins playlist and we've got Maps's playlist. And it, what I find fascinating with these specific playlists is they are psychoactive dependent or pinned playlists. We've got one for psilocybin and one for MAPS, or excuse me, for MDMA. If I type in onto Google psychedelic music, we have an astonishing 22.3 million videos on the internet, which shows a very big variety in which the user can pick and select which makes me think it's almost overwhelming to establish the correct music to to provide maximum benefit for the client we have to look at the duration in which each psychoactive substance is administered psilocybin is a vastly different mechanism or excuse me onset of duration versus dmt versus ketamine versus um mdma all of these psychoactive substances have varying levels of duration which means that we should and psychotherapists should think about curating the playlist that matches the onset or the admi initial administration of the drug the um upwards scale the peak and then the afterglow phases looking at this this was taken from spotify and it, this is another highlight to show different psychoactive substances for different playlists. And I've noticed that they have different flavors or different tones, excuse me, as I've previously stated in the slide. Some personal questions that I have include, should there be required conversation about the client's playlist? Should there uh, should requests of skipping songs be handled during the psychedelic trip? How should a psychotherapist handle this situation? If we have an individual that has an emotional response or has a negative emotions evoked, do they have the authority to say, is it okay if I skip the song or induce silence? Are there any protocol for removing or punish, uh, excuse me, pushing through emotionally challenging music? Does the therapist have the authority to say, no, we will not skip this music because it is the medicine that is working for you. You need to push through this. And I have interesting thoughts about this. What happens if the music is the primary source of this person's negative emotionality versus the actual effects of the psycho, um, excuse me, the psychoactive substance? Previewing of the playlist, will it evoke nostalgic neural pathways? That is another interesting caveat that I've been thinking about is should psychotherapists give the playlist to the participant prior to the session to kind of get them used to what the playlist should be or give them the playlist cold turkey and to not let them anticipate or be primed of the overall effect. And then lastly, is it ethical to curate a playlist that attempts to maximize the mystical type experiences? 
And I know that with technology advancing and artificial intelligence technologies grow, what happens if we utilize the power of AI and your prior history to curate a maximally therapeutic playlist? So some future directions that I have with music and psychedelic assisted therapy. Alcohol use disorder is a chronic and relapsing brain disorder and it has terrible consequences on one's health and relationships. And Alcoholics Anonymous stated that 75% have experienced a relapse during their first year of recovery. And for those who are sober uh, within five years have a rate of 7% is very, very low. So a way that I want to promote is this concept of the relapse prevention playlist. In other words, a client undergoes a psychedelic assisted therapy session with the indication of a substance use disorder, and the client and the therapist curates a meaningful playlist that is appropriate. And then when the client feels like relapsing in their times of isolation, they're encouraged to listen to that playlist to mitigate the relapse, essentially coining a Pavlov's dog conditioning where I want the stimulus of the meaningful playlist to give the overall effect of relapse prevention. And I would love to be able to pair this concept with a physical activity, whether it's walking or breathing exercises or breath work. And hopefully this tool could be another kit in their arsenal for those to mitigate any type of relapse. So in conclusion, Music is a powerful tool that can enhance one's journey in psychedelic therapy, but I really want to drive this home. It should not be the driver. The individual should be the one guiding the journey, and music should be, as Bill Richards had stated, the net where it's not even there, but in times that they need extra comfort or anchoring, it's there. Therapists should obtain informed consent and, and inquire an individual's preferences and be very culturally sensitive. We do not know certain people's backgrounds and certain music, as I'd stated previously, could evoke negative emotionality. Clients should be encouraged to revisit the same playlist to evoke positive nostalgia and bring them back to the psychedelic assisted therapy session. And then lastly, I really want to point this out, more research is absolutely critical within the field of neuroscience of music to explore how music can alter emotions under altered states of consciousness. Thank you very much, and here's my contact information. I hope you enjoyed my presentation.